am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Thanks everybody for waiting for me. This is going to be a good video today. Uh, I'm going to just talk about current events and going to get caught up in all the insanity that's going on. So uh, thank you very much for waiting for me. I'll tell you while we're doing the cards what was going on in my house that caused me not to be able to video for a while and it was a nightmare. Uh, not anything bad or sick or accident or anything like that, just construction that was going on in my house. It was in unbelievable. So we'll talk about that while we're doing the cards. Current events. This whole Trump thing, the Biden situation, J.D. Vance, what's going to happen to Kamala? We'll just, at the, off the top of my head, I don't have anything prepared. I'm just so happy to be making a video again. So thank you so much uh, for uh, watching my video. And if you like the video, I hope you will like the video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It just means an awful lot and makes my channel better and it makes, it helps me get more viewers, frankly. And thank you so very much for watching. Well, as promised, it's going to be a big uh, video today. I've got two decks of cards here because there's so much going on. So uh, you'll see I've got the uh, Legrand and the uh, Touchstone. So let's put one aside. Well, let's put them, well, let's put them both aside. Well, I'm going to talk, so we'll, we'll do this first. Um, what has been going on in my life? I know you're, everyone's interested to know that. If you're not, I'm going to tell you anyway. So, you know, I recently moved, and recently for me is last uh, November. So that's uh, November uh, 2023. I'm relocated from Seattle, uh, Washington to Clearwater, Florida. And so we loaded our stuff in, in a, a moving truck uh, that we paid for, you know, a big semi situation that they were gonna drive our goodies across the, the country and sold most of what we had, not most of what we had, I would say maybe that's a lie. Not most of what we had. A lot of stuff is important to me, so it seems like most, but really maybe a third. So that's, that was an exaggeration. But what we did is we had garage sales for probably three months. We dragged stuff, uh, stuff that we had deleted from the house, put in the garage, and then from the garage we dragged it out to the driveway. Lived in a gated community, so I'd have to have the gates open all the time. Thankfully, we lived next to the gate, so that was convenient. And then for probably three months, we had a garage sale all the time. I'd go put about eight signs outside in the various streets uh, directing people to our home <clears throat> with the address and, uh, and let everybody know there was a garage sale. And we'd sell piece by piece by piece by piece. Well, after all that, then uh, we had to um, we finally, uh, we're selling the house is what the weight was. So finally the house sold. And uh, now it's time to get it loaded up. So hire a moving truck and movers to come pack stuff up and load it into a truck. And, uh, and remembering, hopefully, just to keep out just enough because we ourselves, we're gonna drive from Seattle to uh, Florida and make it kind of a long vacation-y kind of a trip, uh, which we did driving across the top of the country instead of the bottom of the country. And that's how I had arrived to the West Coast 20, six years ago i'd driven from florida to california and then i've lived all over the country and ended up finally in seattle so uh that was the deal the moving truck moves with our leaves with our stuff they're going to deliver it in about a month so we got plenty of time to get there as a matter of fact the arrangement was that when i wanted this stuff i would call up the moving company they'd load it up from the storage and bring it over <clears throat> that could take two weeks from that point so that's what happened uh then uh, we drive and uh, interesting uh, fact is that uh, we have a, a Tesla Model Y, so it's a big, uh, or a kind of a medium-sized SUV, but all electric. And that was a, a big concern for lots of folks, not for, for, for me, because I'd driven Teslas for many years now. And uh, so no problem uh, getting uh, energy across the country, as easy as one, two, three. Um, we made a beautiful trip, visited lots of nice places, took lots of videos, and, uh, and then finally made it to Florida in about, 10 days or so. 10 days we arrived to a, a home, a, a condo villa type that we happened to have owned in Florida for seven or eight years already. We had been renting it out. And uh, so uh, tenant knew they had to leave and they did. They left the 
the condo in beautiful condition. Wonderful people. We're friends still. And uh, hi, uh, Joe and Shannon, if you're watching. <laughs> and um, and then we moved into the darn uh, condo, but we had no furniture to live with. But somehow, the folks we had bought it for from so many years before had left furniture in the attic. Tables, chairs, they had left glasses, uh, plates, dishes, uh, utensils, uh, eating utensils. I mean, everything we needed to live until our stuff was there and we had taken a big blow up queen size bed that actually comes up to the side the height of a, of a real double mattress on a frame uh, so we brought that with us because we've had that for years and years and years and it's been a lifesaver always and uh, so here we were and in the, one of my previous tenants before uh, Joe and Shannon um, had left uh, some beach chairs so I mean and, and we also brought a television with us in the car so in the car we had the clothes that we knew we'd need for a couple of months. Um, also, we brought a coffee machine, pots and pans, um, just and and then medicines and toiletries and things that we knew we'd need to live for a couple of months. And so uh, there we are in the in the in our new home, kind of uh, mostly empty, but able to live great. You know, very comfortable and waiting for, uh, waiting for our stuff to arrive. And it did finally arrive, um, but it was after two weeks or so and then uh, load, uh, got the stuff loaded in the house. And uh, once we had moved into the house, we decided there were some renovations we wanted to make to, because this seems, this hopefully is the last stop for us. Back uh, full circle, from, left from Florida 26 years ago, and now we're back uh, where we started. So let's uh, renovate the kitchen, let's renovate the guest bath, and let's renovate the master bath. So this is a much smaller place. It's one level, uh, two bedrooms, two baths, about 1,200 square feet, in a magnificent uh, uh, retirement community. Um, minutes from Clearwater Beach was a beautiful beach with sugar sand and um, and just minutes from downtown Clearwater itself. Uh, you can uh, either drive to Clearwater Beach in 10 or 15 minutes depending on the traffic or uh, you can uh, uh, you could get on a bus at the front of the, the uh, 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 community, take that to downtown Clearwater where there's a trolley which is lots of fun that you can take to Clearwater Beach. So perfect retirement community and we have friends here. And so it was a very happy move and uh, everything was beautiful. Well, the renovation started and that was the problem because uh, the bids were from astronomical to really scary cheap uh, for kitchen, bath and bath. The astronomical off the list, the middle ground, nice company but uh, we decided to go with the cheapest option uh, so uh, went with this fellow who, uh, who was going to do this now to a, um, uh, a place to pick out the cabinets and the granite and all that sort of stuff and I just didn't get along with the fellow so I decided not to use him and I, so there so the higher bid went out the lower bid went out and now we're in the middle which is still incredibly cheap uh, that company started and I said to those folks, we're going to do the, the kitchen. If we like that, we'll move on to the next bathroom. If we like that, we'll move on to the final bathroom. Great. So three parts. Well, it ended up taking three months. And I won't go into why, but the end result was fantastic. The, the folks who came out and did the work, and we met about 12 different sets of workers, more or less, uh, during this uh, renovation that would come in and do different parts. Some would do demolition, some would do uh, sheetrock, some would do cabinets, others would do tile work, um, others would do electrical. So it was a big, uh, and it'd be a different team that would come every time. But part of that, if you want to say family, of this um, uh, uh, construction company. Well, these folks were, um, most of them were coming from another country. And so they're emigrating to the, to the United States. And so we were working on their time. You know, like if you move to uh, uh, Italy or France, rural France, and you have something done, it gets done in France time or in Italy time. Well, this was getting done in the uh, these folks' time from where they came from. I won't mention where. And so it just took forever. Every time they would do a little bit of construction, um, the doors would have to be open so they could go in and out. So now it's hot in the house or we're burning the air conditioner like mad. And, uh, and then every time they'd make a cut of any kind of sheetrock or tile or, 
or take down any ceiling stuff that would then have to be rebuilt. All that dust would fill the house. And by this time, we'd already moved all our stuff in, like you see it here. All the other rooms are, are you know, decorated and, and decked out, like, like you see behind me here, all of the rest of the house. Uh, so every time they'd leave every day for three months, uh, we would have to clean the house, like a deep clean, vacuum the entire house, wipe down every surface that you see because it's all covered with dust. Kitchen, you couldn't clean, uh, cook in the kitchen before you wiped it down. You couldn't walk on the floors in those houses, in those rooms that weren't carpeted. Uh, you felt like in the rooms that were carpeted, you were just smushing the, the construction dust down into them. Nightmare. But the first project, the kitchen, the, we thought was the biggest one, got done, okay? And beautiful, amazing, and I'll show you in a video sometime. Then uh, a couple of weeks, weeks break, because we needed that. And then on to the second bathroom, same scenario, dusty, longer than usual. Folks would be here from um, nine or 10 or 11 o'clock until five, six, seven or eight o'clock in the evening. So no, we couldn't even live in our own house. And then after those people left, if it was eight o'clock in the evening, then we're cleaning the house again. So that's another month. That got done, fantastic result. Okay, another break for us. Then final uh, bathroom, same thing all over again. But now it's all done. And during this, the dust in the air, I've got eye problems, so the dust in the air gave me eye infections. Um, we would stay out of the house as much as possible. One of us would stay here and the other one would escape and just go drive around and go to the beach or, or take a walk for hours. And then we'd switch and the other one would, would do that. That was going on for three months. So we have been exhausted. I have been exhausted just from the process of the renovation, but it's done now. Three months later, the place is fantastic. We couldn't be happier, and um, I would never do it again. <laughs> so that's what happened to me, and that's what was going on uh, f lately. But all that's done, and uh, now it's time to talk about what's going on. Well, I, I chose this Circus and Sideshow Tarot because what's going on politically in the United States and other countries too, but really where I'm living in the United States is just, it's just a nightmare. People, you know, I'm democratic and I, I will not have any, and if the, if my democratic candidate was Donald Trump, I would not vote for him. I would vote for the other side. That man has no morals. He uh, is a, a grifter and a thief, uh, a sexual, uh, uh, I guess, um, and um, or deviant uh, is probably a better thing to say, and um, and 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 not anything of a businessman who is born into money. And I'm going to tell you something: when you're born into money, you and as much as he was, his father's and his grandfather who made the millions, and that's a whole other story, which I think I've done a video on that. If you want to dig it up, uh, but. Um, so this man, it's, and it's been a nightmare to watch the people who in the beginning was said, I will never have anything to do with this man. He's, he's, he's the scum of the earth. And then now those people, and specifically now J.D. Vance, are he's the best thing since, since sliced bread. If you want to see some really good, uh, take, take me to the church kind of... Uh, um, bringing people to to bear about uh, these these MAGA candidates. Watch some of those Pete Buttigieg videos whenever they pop up, because on the news reels, because he just tells it straight, calmly, honestly, and you can follow what he's saying. And it's all you need to know. And public uh, PBS News is where we've resorted now. So, so that's what's going on, and that's what the video is going to be about today. Going to talk about those insane people that are in the news all the time. But before we do any of that, let's have just a moment because we need it. Let's have a moment. Join me with this, okay? Just read it off, clear your head, a moment of meditation. Okay. And what I do uh, during that little break there in my head is I'm just asking for uh, protection from evil. I'm asking for guidance from a specific saint. I'm asking 
folks who I'm uh, who are close to me who passed if they can uh, help to lend a hand and that's it so uh, now let's talk about um, this political situation in general I had in my mind JD Vance so we're gonna talk about JD Vance to begin with so I'm gonna get three cards just to see where they lead us on JD Vance Trump's vice president pick and uh, what's what's what where is this guy's head first card okay so this is the eight of cups this is very interesting so the eight of C cups are um, heartfelt situations emotional situations and uh, things that matter to you but the eight of cups is having to walk away from all of your heartfelt situations and leave it all behind and that's what Vance has done he's walked away from any emotional um, um, integrity that he may have had for this possibility of being the vice president and maybe Trump will kick off while he's vice while he's in there and then JD Vance gets to be president that's what that's all about for JD Vance opportunity because if you look back on some of his videos he was the first one to say Trump I'm a never Trumper he said and I then would go on to list all the horrible things about Trump next card for JD Vance then is the chariot the chariot is uh, things is a hot major arcana and it tells you that things are coming on fast okay so this uh, decision I think he courted and for for that for that kind of a decision it did happen pretty quickly Trump um, courted several people but he picked the guy who had uh, who he felt would do what he told him to do and that guy will do anything to be vice president of the United States and then the final one is the Emperor so it brings us to Trump so the Emperor made the choice so JD Vance kind of emotionally what are we talking about with him right now he had to walk away from his heartfelt beliefs if he had any to begin with he sold his soul in other words and that happened quickly and the Emperor uh, is in charge right now he belongs Vance belongs to Trump that's what we've got right now but um, I guess we want to know let's just do something quick to say is JD Vance going to be vice president of the United States is JD Vance going to be vice president of the United States don't you want to know three cards one two and three okay song I really didn't look at him first card up is justice is JD Vance going to be vice president of the United States well justice is here the okay this is long-term planning this is the two of ones ones are actions plans forward movement <clears throat> JD Vance is looking at and the two of, of wands represents short-term plans so these are the tent poles this is what's holding up this circus tent you can see one of them seems to be doing a major part of the work if you look at how the the tent roof is is draped from that one pole but the second pole is right here and Vance is looking to the future okay uh, to be vice president is he going to be vice president hey, look it's an illusion the seven of cups is illusion and delusion and so if he believes that that's going to happen to him no it's just a smokescreen one more card to see if it better defines that and uh, remembering how things were so the six of cups a, a simpler time um, I have to admit I feel like my personal bias is coming in here but if, if Vance is thinking that he's gonna take the United States back to a, a better emotional time in that regime he's just not right so I don't think with this illusion card here and uh, with justice uh, leading the way that Vance is going to be vice president of the United States now what about this shooter what about this young man who the fact that he was willing to try to do that okay he gave up his life at that moment he was never going to escape uh, culpability for that if he hadn't been killed he would have been arrested he would have been tried he would have gone to jail for the rest of his life for trying to assassinate a you know a political candidate and a former pre former president so the fact that that they you know the authorities took him out right away 
he didn't have to suffer his life in jail. Let's just say that. But um, what about that young man? I don't remember his name because I'm trying not to watch that much of the news. So I haven't drilled down on a lot of this stuff. But let's see what the cards can tell us about this young man who, um, who tried to and ended up killing an innocent bystander and wounding two other innocent bystanders. Although everybody was there at this MAGA convention for this uh, sexual deviant and this 34 times convicted felon. Twice impeached maniac. So what about this young man? <sighs> Again, it's this smokescreen of illusion and delusion. He felt like he could make a difference here, but this shows the state of his mind. Okay? Illusion, delusion. The next thing, we, look at that. When the cards repeat, I love it when the cards repeat and they've rep repeated with this one and this one. You saw me shuffle, pull, pull these out at random, but justice was in there. Okay? For some reason, this was going to happen. And then the final card is the Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups is usually happy family, kind of. It's the uh, it's wanting to uh, celebrate all of your emotional wealth. And um, let's get three more cards for this poor young man. Okay, one more. Okay, so this is the Six of Wands, and the Six of Wands is a victory. He believed he was headed for a victory. The uh, the full card was a new, is a new journey. It's a major arcana. And it's been taking off without realizing that you could be stepping right into the mouth of the lion. And the final card for that young man is the three of pentacles. Um, you know, if it were the three of swords, it'd be a broken heart. But the Three of Pentacles is putting something together for public display. And it's always a transitional kind of a card. So he was in the, fr in the mind frame of doing something for the value, for the benefit of, of the public. So let's talk about this young man again. His illusion and delusion is what let him off. Delusion and the illusion that there wasn't justice to be paid for what he was going to do. Happy family, as in you know, the United States is where he was aiming for. The, the victory is what had uh, enticed him to go forward. It was a fool's journey to begin with. It was always doomed. And, but his, his purpose in his mind wasn't to kill somebody uh, for a malicious, he was driven to that. And what, what were the clues to us? He had an AK-47 easily available to him. Apparently his father had several guns in the house. 20-year-old man was able to get a hold of that stuff. So it wasn't, it wasn't as horrible as it was. It wasn't from a murderous, just for the sake of murder. This fella thought he was doing good. I hope he's able to write his... Um, you want to call it sins or, you know, his, what a waste of a life. What a shame and what a waste of a life. So, um, now what about Trump in this issue? Okay, so he's the guy who's been uh, taking aim at. He's the fellow who um, was there, took a dive to the stage, took a graze to the ear. What about Trump? Uh what about Trump during that moment? Trump during that moment. Just three cards. And amazing, he has just jumped right back into the into the into the fire. Trump, King of Wands. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. King is as high as you can go in a suit. He is the king now of actions, plans, forward movements. That's where he was. He was he was in control. The King of Swords, look at this, also truth, justice, rules, and law. And the final one is the Knight of Swords, a fighter. So yeah, this is the delusion of Donald Trump. Okay, his plans are, are what rule him. Um, believing that he is, he has absolutely convinced himself that this belongs to him. 
and it's only right for him to have it, whatever cost, at whatever cost. And he will fight like a knight uh, to get his, what he believes is his due. Three more cards for Donald Trump at that moment. Well, of course, it was a magician. Everything was lined up for him. I mean, did you see where that happened? He was facing forward where that uh, uh, gunshot would have come at him from the side and probably gone right through his head. And at that, just before the gunshot, he turns his head and it goes through his, you know, grazes his ear and kills somebody sitting down. So, you know, he is a magician. There is some, I'm sorry, in my mind, some malevolent um, uh, uh, force that is uh, backing up this man's um, horrific vision. Uh, the Queen of Wands. Wands are action plans, forward movement. And she is serving up to him uh, exactly what he wants. And then the final card for Trump in that moment is the Queen of Cups, you know, preying on everyone's emotions. Was he ever going to die? Ace of Swords, no. He was never going to uh, be put down. Man. And he has completely used this for his, um, well, for his uh, game as he turns everything around to his benefit. Um, Joe Biden. We're going to switch now, because it's my prerogative, from the Circus Sideshow Tarot to the Touchstone Tarot. Remember, I'll tell you about these cards at the end of the video. And, uh, So you can see, uh, learn a little bit more about them, get to see more of these cards. And um, I don't know, it's always interesting to me when I was just a viewer, I wanted to know more about the cards I was seeing the tarot readers use. And I might see seven, 10, 15 cards or so, but I always wanted to know what the rest of that deck looked like. So I decided when I started making videos that at the end of them, I would do a little review of the cards. I was doing them at the first of the videos for a while, but realize people didn't care. Why should they sit through that? So you look at the video, if you're interested in the cards, it'll be at the end. Stay tuned for that. Um, so Biden, the debate, what was happening with Biden at the debate? He says he was ill with a cold and that's why he was who we saw on stage. Three cards for Biden at the time of the debate. And here we go. Okay, so the Knight of Swords, he showed up as a fighter. That's who he was there. Truth, justice, rules, law, he showed up to be the fighter. Uh, the Knight of Coins, he was there to defend his value. And the Four of Cups, this was so, is, is emotionally something you don't really want. You've got three cups, there's one being handed to you, but this guy is a little indifferent to that. This is not something he ever really wanted to do. Let's face it, a debate with Donald Trump is not a debate. He doesn't know the issues. He's only there to insult you, insult the party, and, and brag about himself and lie, which is what he did. And it's been proven that everything that came out of Trump's mouth during that debate was lies. Three more cards. Joe Biden at, at the end of that debate. Joe Biden at the end of that debate. <clears throat> Five of Swords. This is um, Theft of Betrayal. Or Abuse of Power. Uh, Ace of Cups. So, the, the Ace of Cups is a great big emotional um, jolt. And strength. So believe it or not, Joe Biden came out of that feeling a little okay. One more card. The reality is that he felt uh, trapped by the circumstances he was in and unable to respond. So he'd gone into it as a fighter. He, um, because of the condition he was in, he came he came out of it. Uh, or went through it uh, very ineffectively and um, it was all a big disappointment and, and even a surprise to him how poorly he did. 
Well, what's going to happen to Joe Biden now? What's going to happen? Because now you've got everyone asking Joe to get out. Okay. You got, you know, tens of the folks in the Senate and probably I think some in the House too saying, get out. You've got movie personalities. Get out. You've got important political figures. You've got big financial backers. Get out. But the thing is, no one's saying, well, who are we going to put in? Okay. Why are we going to back out at this late date? I believe what's happening is, um, and this is going to be about, is it a good idea for Joe to stay in the race? You've got, <clears throat> well, let's just go ahead and talk about it. Uh, pull the cards. One, two, three. Is it a good idea for Joe Biden to stay in the race? What happens is you've got a large percentage of people who are not swayed by what's on television at the moment. They've made up their mind how they're going to vote. They have calculated in their brain, if Joe Biden kicks off, we've got an honest Kamala Harris who will choose an honest second to be by your side. So these folks have already made their mind, just like the people who will vote for Trump have already decided they're going to vote for Trump. And this, uh, this win for him in that debate was just more, this survival of him in that uh, assassinated attempt, just more fuel to their fire. But Joe Biden, Ace of Cups comes up again. So it's turned around now to where it's a value card. The Sun card, okay, is excellent. And the Two of Cups, the perfect lovers. It looks like Joe Biden has got everything he needs to pull this off. He's got the Ace of Cups, bring him a great big emotional gift, okay? And the, the Dove is coming out of the cup. You've got the Sun card shining down on uh, Biden. And you've got the Two of Cups, which is uh, like a lover's card. It's a perfect pairing, emotionally situated. And uh, so, yeah, this is telling me that, um, it, that, yeah, he's going to pull it off. The, um, I think we have to believe that uh, Joe can do this, okay? We've got to have faith. And uh, like I told you in the beginning, if my only choice, uh, if, if Trump was representing my party, no way I would vote for him. No way. He's just morally bankrupt. He's a criminal, and uh, and you knew that. We all knew that. Those of us with clear minds, and those and those who are actually still supporting him, they know what they're voting for. And if you've got those people in your life, they're out of my life, as a matter of fact. So, Yay! stay tuned. I'll tell you about the cards. And now we'll see about Kamala Harris. So this will be, oh, my camera's a little, I'm out of frame. So how's that? Yeah, that's better. So um, let's see. What can the cards tell us about the situation with Kamala Harris? Doug, her husband, will make a terrific uh, first gentleman. That's interesting. Uh, she'll be the first uh, Asian uh, woman from the Asian continent. She'll be the first black American woman. Sorry. And um, she was uh, Attorney General of California and then represented California in the Senate. So, and she was a prosecutor in general before she was Attorney General. So she'll be the, it'll be interesting that she brings those particular skills as a prosecutor and Attorney General to uh, a campaign against a 34 time uh, convicted felon. Not to mention everything else he's, he's guilty of. So, very interesting. So let's see, what can the cards tell us about Camel? Uh, let's do three cards to begin with. One, two, because this is pretty important, three. Let's just get an idea of where her head is right now. She's been loyal to Biden. Uh, the first card up is a five of wands. So this is an abuse of power. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement, and the five of wands is also, really, it's kind of an art, and it's not an abuse of power. That's the five of swords. The five of wands is kind of an argy-bargy. It's kind of a, a pointless um, arguing, fighting, but this one person here who has to represent Kamala is standing with their action, with their plan, outside of the fray. Interesting. So this is kind of where her head is. 
Next one up is the Three of Wands, and the Three of Wands, and this looks like a woman. And this is long-term planning. Again, action plans, forward movement. Three of Wands is looking forward into the future, and this person is uh, looking very studious indeed. I think I've got a sneeze coming on. <coughs> yes, and uh, thank you. And then uh, the final one is the Empress. So she is enlightened. She is blessed. Uh, very good cards for Kamala Harris. So uh, the pointless uh, arguing with his action plans in the background. She's standing in the in the forefront uh, above all of that. Long term plans. So this is going to be the beginning of an eight year term for Kamala Harris. And then this is um, she's uh, really blessed. She's like, have a, has a special. Ah, I don't want to blow my nose. Has, has a special uh, angel looking over her shoulder. But now let's do uh, six cards, a, a Celtic cross for Kamala Harris as, uh, you know, candidate, Democratic nominee. Will she get the nomination? And Democratic candidate. Well, let's do three cards first of all. Will she get the nomination? Because it's not uh, definite that she will. She has to earn that nomination. Uh, the folks who had already committed to Biden, all of them aren't necessarily, as very, a majority of them aren't necessarily committed to Kamala yet. Five of coins. This is standing, this is about coins or value. So this is definitely about her, not only campaign funds, but her value as the candidate. And five of coins is typically standing outside the um, the place where these people can get help. It's interesting that this, are these two female figures? But the stronger figure, which kind of can could resemble Kamala, if you squint your eyes a little bit, is comforting this weaker figure as they stand just outside of the of the church where they can get all the help that they need. So five of coins is being just outside of a place where you can get uh, comfort. And then the but the sun card uh, comes up here just like it did for Biden. She is uh, blessed uh, by the uh, sun and with the three of cups celebrations emotional women celebrating. She's got this sewed up. So now let's do a six card. That's the nomination. So now let's do a six card uh, regarding her winning uh, the presidency. Here we go. Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Six cards for Kamala winning the presidency. Okay, first card up. This is the signifier card. So this is the main a signifier for Kamala, the Queen of Cups, Queen of Emotion. Interesting, strong uh, to come out. She has been number two for quite some time, so she's got a transition out of that number two position, that queen position, and that's where she's starting. It's challenged by what strength? It's challenged by strength. And this is encouraging because this shows this woman has tamed the savage beast, okay? So uh, starting out as number two, Queen of Cups is challenged by strength. The baseline of all of this then is the chariot. Is everything coming on rapidly? Of course it is. She hasn't had the, the uh, leisure of planning a long campaign. She has had to pick up the ball and start running. And maybe that's what she needed. Maybe she needed to have this urgency uh, to give her the, uh, the strength to push forward. But in the past for Kamala is the hermit. It is the hermit. Yeah, hermit is the person who's carefully thinking about their next move. They're standing back. And that's what she's had to be. She's had to be the person standing back behind Biden in the past, okay? No longer. In the sky, this uh, is the Empress card. So she comes back. She gets repeated to remind us that uh, Kamala is blessed. And then the final outcome for all of this, uh, Kamala as uh, will she win the presidency, is the page of coins. Well, this is the problem. She brings to this, just in her value, just a page's worth of coins. Remember, you got the king, all, you know, he's the strongest, the queen, the uh, knight who's fighting for the king, and then you have a page who brings a message to the court. So she's kind of sneak, sneaking in on the court in this way, but let's do this. Let's get four more cards to make this a full Celtic cross. Kamala Harris, does she win the presidency? The very uh, signifier of that question, the strength of that question, the core of that question is the Two of Cups. Does she have, yes, she's got a perfect pairing. This can either represent where she is with Biden right now or whom she's going to choose as her uh, number two. I think it's gonna be a man. This is a young looking uh, fellow. And uh, that's in the environment of what? 
that's in the environment of the Ace of Cups, having, she's got this big, emo and you wouldn't think that looking at her, but she's got a huge amount of emotional value that she's bringing to this. So Ace of Cups is the uh, environment that this uh, perfect pairing is in. The hopes and the fears for this, will she be the president? Is the Ace of Swords, truth, justice, rules, law. This is Kamala, this is Kamala. She is the Ace of Swords, okay? And then the final outcome is gonna be right here, and uh, Seven of Wands moving, uh, not moving. This is uh, all of these actions and plans are up against her, but she is fighting the valiant fight. She looks as if she can overcome this. These look somewhat defeated. I think I have to get one more card as a signifier. Kamala as president, four comes. Something that she never really wanted. It comes back to that emotional situation. In this situation, this isn't how she wanted to get it. Something's being offered to her, to her that, um, that, um, that she doesn't really want. I think we're gonna have to have another card. And then here we have the Seven of Cups, Illusion and Delusion. You know, the cards are just not being definite about uh, about this, this final answer. And so there's nothing we can do about that except respect uh, the answers that we've gotten. It all is positive, it's just not definite. It maybe hasn't been written. So there we go. Hey, I'm gonna show you the cards now, hang on a minute. So Le Grand Circus and Sideshow Tarot by Joe Lee. These are really terrific cards. They come in a very nice box. If you received them as a gift or gave them as a gift, you'd feel like, oh, that's, that was a nice gift. And um, the cards themselves are really nice. Um, they're done in the style of sort of circus posters. And uh, the guidebook uh, is really a very nice little guidebook. This fellow Joe Lee, uh, was a very interesting uh, person, or is a very interesting person, and uh, I want to find, there's a little bit here that talks about him, um, but he was a circus performer, he went to the Clown College in Florida, which I'm from Florida, and I'm very well of the Clown College there, uh, uh, that uh, you can go to to get a, a degree in that, and then uh, he's done other things in his life, and then once he decided uh, that he would create uh, tarot cards, he uh, designed these um, to be so very useful. They're easy to use. Um, the art on them is amazing. And if you know your right away system, you're not gonna have a problem, you know, deciphering uh, what these cards are, are gonna mean. I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory and fun, fun, fun to look at. So, you know, I do this so that you can have a look at these cards. Uh, and, you know, if you're not a person who collects cards or looks at a bunch of tarot cards, otherwise you're only gonna see the few cards that a reader pulls at a time and uh, I think it's just you're missing out on a lot so you know this uh, Le Grand uh, Circus Sideshow Tarot I love using these okay so these are again some amazing cards the Touchstone Tarot by Cat Black who's an Australian artist she lives in on the western uh, southwestern I think part of Australia but the box is so great you really feel like you got something worthwhile in that the instruction booklet is um, is very good as a matter of fact it's not in color but it's got some really good uh, ideas for divination tells you a little bit about the artist so that's handy and then the cards I mean look how beautiful they are even just the back is gilding you can feel that gilding right there but the front these cards are not hard to decipher but they really focus in on the face of you'll notice all of these are you know from the bust up from the waist almost up so they really make you identify with the face when you're trying to make the interpretation. Cat Black is amazing. Um, I don't know how uh, she came up with this, but she came up with some beautiful, beautiful artwork. And all digital. So there's not a painting somewhere that looks like this. Of course, these are made from actual uh, paintings. And, you know, I, I do this so that everybody can look at these cards and maybe you don't get to see uh, kind of different kind of cards. And, um, and this gives you that opportunity. I always wanted to see what the tarot readers were using, what the cards looked like when I was uh, only just uh, being a viewer.